Thank you very much indeed, Ray, and uh, to the Miller Centre, thank you very much for this opportunity to explore a very interesting problem of privacy and terrorism, and that's what attracted me to come some distance to participate in this debate. It's the two sides of things, privacy and terrorism. Why? Because these are not just questions of law and politics and the Constitution, though there are very important issues in that area. They're also very human questions. If I go back to my hotel room and find that someone's been rifling through the drawers and my papers, the question for me is not whether a crime has been committed or whether I've been found out doing something inappropriate. It's just very uncomfortable to feel that somebody's been going through my property. My space has been invaded, and that's important. It generates feelings for me. When I experience terrorism, as I have at home for over 30 years up until the recent peace process, then of course I feel strongly about it. The very word terrorism tells us why. It's about creating not just anxiety or fear, but rank terror in the feelings of those who are victims and those who are targets. Very human things, not just a matter of the fact that law has been broken and a political fight is being waged. So when I think about privacy and terrorism, I think about the feelings that are created and I recognize that sometimes those feelings can be so overpowering that we respond emotionally rather than reflectively and thoughtfully. And when governments do that, when they react emotionally, powered by their own people to do so, they very often make mistakes. They get things wrong. When laws are passed without proper and due consideration, they're usually not very good laws, and we discover problems with them. And when government acts rapidly and without thought, it's frequently counterproductive. In our experience, when we had terrorism appearing in our streets, the government, first of all, addressed it as a security problem. And when they found the police couldn't deal adequately with it, executive detention without trial was brought in because the intelligence agencies say, we know who's doing it, we just need to get them inside. But what was the result? The result was that it acted as a recruiting sergeant for terrorists because all sorts of unfair things were done the law was not appropriately regarded because of people's fears and because of people's emotional reaction. Laws were passed which were not very wise laws, which weren't well thought through and turned out to be counterproductive. And they alienated our friends, people in the United States of America, this great country, looked at the United Kingdom and said, but that's not what we expect of the mother of parliaments. That's not what we expect of the British government when it's acting in Ireland. We expect it to think through these matters and respond in a way that respects human dignity and human rights. And so eventually, after a long time, we had to begin to pull back and say, there is not a security answer on its own to this problem. There's a security rule. There's an intelligence rule, but there's not an answer to our problems. These are human problems that have got to be dealt with through thought and engagement with our friends and with those who oppose us to try to find a different way. And, and that's really the issue that we're dealing with. It's not about finding some way of clamping down, of diminishing our expectations of our human lives and our human society. We've observed what happens when societies turn to inappropriate intrusion into private life, into concentrating on security and intelligence, into making every third person into a spy on everyone from their own family to those that they work and live amongst. We saw it on the other side of the Iron Curtain. And it didn't work there because the human spirit realized there was another and better way of conducting our societies. One that does not protect us from every single risk, one that has required us to take responsibility and some courage, but one through which the, the human spirit survives and indeed thrives. No, colleagues, it's not about reducing any of our human expectations. It's about raising them, raising our game, and raising our respect for humanity and human rights, and through that, raising our human security.